Welcome back to another edition of Modern Dallas TV. I'm Jeff Levine with ModernDallas.net. Every week we bring homes, galleries, and events that all fit into Modern Dallas. And last week we spent time at Modern Mile Dallas, which was a home tour that we sponsored. And I have to tell you, unbelievable amount of people showed up for this tour. And one of the best parts of it, it was all in a square mile and we saw hordes of people walking between the homes. Modern is alive and well. And today on the real estate side, we visit a spectacular modern designed by E.G. Hamilton, the original designer and architect for North Park Mall in Highland Park. We stop by Crochet Gallery and talk to Phil Crochet about his photographic gallery. And lastly, Modern Dallas goes to the fair. The State Fair actually has a magnificent sculpture garden that's curated by Lottie Minnick and also Canstruction, a wonderful exhibit of sculptures from food cans which will all eventually be donated to the North Texas Food Bank. Stick around for the art and the calendar and there's a whole lot more going on in modern Dallas. Modern Dallas Real Estate is here today at 3616 Crescent. Uh, it's a home in the Highland Park area, and we're here with the esteemed architect, E.G. Hamilton. Uh, this house was built in the early 60s. E.G., welcome, and tell us where you came you. up with this concept in the 60s. <laughs> well, this, this uh, is very much a product of the early contemporary movement. When I went to Washington University in, in the late 30s, early 40s, they were just changing over from the Beaux-Arts system into contemporary art. And I had two professors that were very passionate about this new development. And I became very passionate about it. And, and I believe very much in in its basic concepts and principles. This is a what I call a minimalist house or design with emphasis on, on elegant spaces, simple uh, forms, uh, uh, indoor-outdoor relationships, and immaculate details and minimalist details. I think that sums it up pretty effectively. Good. So the question bodes is, was this something you had to convince the client on? No. Or had, or had they already bought no, no, into no. the idea? No, we, we, were, uh, we were friends and they were familiar with some work I'd done and, and uh, uh, they were uh, really on board all the way. Obviously you mentioned the details. How involved was the client in actually all the details and the Emily design? Hexter was involved in determining what was going to go in every drawer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty involved. <laughs> Hexter was involved in making sure that a 16 millimeter projection would work in the family. <laughs> <laughs> well, then they were definitely into the program. The way you've designed it is obviously, it feels like a retreat. It's, I mean, obviously it's on, a, it's on a quite a busy street, but you feel like you're totally secluded. Was that part of the design? Is that what they were looking for? If you studied my work, you would see that this is a theme that's repeated in a number of houses where you have living areas that open to the outside, but protected by garden walls. So you're in the center of a city, but you have a really nice relationship with indoor and outdoor. So let's go to something a little bit more current, preservation in Dallas. And obviously preservation is an important part of what we in the community look at as saving homes that are obviously older than 50 years old. What is your opinion about a home like this and making sure that it is part of the uh, fabric of Dallas? Well, I think it's an, an important example of, of uh, architecture mid-century, 20th century. 
Uh, I've seen people's values change and their interests change. Uh, I've seen the event of the Mega Mansion. I've seen Holland Park being continually renewed with bigger and bigger and uglier and uglier and less well-designed buildings. But I don't think that, that there's probably a great force to preserve. I think that uh, I think most of the people in Highland Park would not have a great appreciation. For that. Sorry to say. No, absolutely. And obviously it's important for us to spread the word. The home is on the market, is available for sale. And uh, one of the reasons to have you involved is to, to show that there was a creative start to this. Well, it, it might be important to note that it's been well preserved and uh, the uh, addition that was done later on uh, without my help was very, very, very uh, true to the original design. The original part of the house is, 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 is essentially like it was to begin with and, and that is something. Uh, for an architect like myself, uh, it's, it's, a, it's great to have your work appreciated and preserved. I've had projects ruined by other architects making later additions, <laughs> and that's very sad. It is, and, and obviously it's all part of the process, making sure on multiple levels it's preserved, not only for the original structure, mm. but through the years, and, and if anything, making it a little bit uh, more appreciative. You know, I came up believing that an architect's job was to find lasting values and to design with lasting values, not for uh, initial shock effect. And uh, it's nice to see that some of those values have been uh, validated in my projects, you know, like this, like North Park. I mean, I think five, 50, 60 years old that are still valid. Absolutely, and current in our life. Just so you, if you're not familiar, E.G. Hamilton was the architect for North Park Mall, which is currently celebrating their 50th anniversary. Experience LED at Lights Fantastic Pro, our sponsor on Modern Dallas TV. Lighting is changing at warp speed and there's definitely an LED revolution going on. You'll see a curated selection of some of the coolest new LED fixtures from some of the best brands around the world. Visit their 12,000 square foot showroom minutes from the new Nebraska Furniture Mart in Louisville off the Sam Raven Tollway. Come see for yourself how lighting can enhance and change your next project. So uh, Modern Dallas uh, Art is here at Full Crochet Gallery. It's a photographic gallery that's just arrived in Dallas on Dragon Street. Phil, thanks for having us here today. Pleasure. And um, this is a wonderful space. It almost reminds me of a Peter Lick Gallery that right. I stopped in in Soho. Right. Got the right. same feel, the same vibe. Uh -huh. uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing in Dallas. How come you uh, selected Dallas and um, what's the, the vision of the gallery? Well it's interesting that you mentioned uh, Peter Lake because he's recently just opened up a gallery in Houston and I was surprised that he hadn't chosen Dallas and so naturally I thought well let's do that before he does. <laughs> um, he was a great inspiration of mine um, when I saw his work first I thought this is something I've got to try and do myself and I, when I, uh, I learned the process and the result is what you see here now. There's a wide array of different subject matter, from the canyons, to the rivers, to guitars, to the Calatrava Bridge. Right. Where does the inspiration start and where does it end? It's about drama. Um, canyons produce a lot of beautiful, beautiful scenery, huge amounts of drama. Um, likewise, trees, there's, there's detail, there's, there's a randomness in a tree that it just never becomes boring. Um, skylines again so much detail so much to see um, so that there, there, there are no rules whatever is interesting uh, you know I'll shoot it and what is the process because obviously these are all photographs sure and uh, you know unlike the gallery down the street PDMB uh -huh. they have a very different subject matter to what you're doing mm -hmm. and this looks very different it's very colorful very bold in some cases bright 
Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about the process, the, you know, the equipment that it takes to, to actually make one of these. Yeah, uh, and it's a question I get asked a lot. The, the camera, it's, it's a very unique setup. It's a, it's a robotic uh, remote controlled camera that, that shoots the picture in a grid. Um, and what happens is that I get the absolute perfect point of the lens in every shot, and then it's all fused together. I then take it to the workshop and uh, print it out onto a metallic paper. It then gets uh, what's called face mounted, which is uh, it's fused to the back of a piece of acrylic. And when you do that, uh, a certain magic happens that is, that is just unexplainable. It just, it's like uh, putting lacquer on a piece, an old piece of wood. It just brings the whole thing to life. Um, it's obviously a very, very precise, time-consuming process, but um, absolutely worth it in the end. Are you involved with the process from beginning to end, or is this, you know, parts of it get sent to different places and... No, um, I am involved in absolutely everything that you see. Absolutely, I, I take the photograph, I mount it, I frame it, um, I do everything. Wow, that's pretty amazing, because this is not yeah. an easy process, this particular piece. It's not, it's incredibly difficult, but there's certain practicalities. The pieces are enormous, and when you start uh, farming out different processes, the shipping becomes so expensive, um, it just, it becomes impractical. You're from Austin originally. Well, yeah. no, you're from London originally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't confuse our accents. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, you're from London, you moved to Austin. We did, we had two galleries there. Um, we did very well, but we were finding that a lot of our, uh, our clients were coming from Dallas, the Houston area, and it made sense really to, to come where, where they are. Right. What is the typical um, collector or somebody purchasing your work, what do they gravitate towards? Oh, that's, that's a very difficult question because everybody has their own personal favorite and their own personal taste. Um, so, I mean, a lot of the time, let's say you get somebody who lived in Austin, they want a piece of Austin in their, in their front room, they'll probably get an Austin Skyline or, or something like this huge piece here from uh, Hamilton Pool. Um, often there's a personal connection with the image itself or they just find it absolutely beautiful. And that's ultimately the goal, is that absolutely. they fall in love with the piece. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Phil, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. I wish you all Thank the you. best here in Dallas. This is a great space. It's a great gallery. I definitely suggest stopping by. Say hi to Phil. It's at 1110 Dragon Street, next to Mary Thomas Gallery. Thank you. My pleasure. Modern Dallas Art is here at the State Fair of Texas. Who knew we would be here, but we are here because of Lottie Minnick, who has created this unbelievable collection of artwork, which is sculpture. The, it's a variation of metal, stone. This is, I think, the only wood piece that's yes, made out of cedar by Chris Kemmler. Yes, a beautiful piece. Beautiful piece. Lottie, how did this all get started? Um, my husband has designed out here many, many years. And uh, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, Rusty Fitzgerald asked me if I'd like to put a few of my sculptures out of the fair. And I said, oh my God, I would love to. And two years later, I said to my husband, do you think they'd let me put a whole sculpture show out there? And he said, do the professional thing, get a, get a book, make a proposal, you know, do it professionally and they might just let you do it. So um, I, I approached Rusty and I said, can I please put a sculpture show at the State Fair of Texas? And Rusty said, yeah. So that's how it happened, just, just that easy. And right now we have 27 artists bringing 30 beautiful pieces out here. And every year it gets better and better. I have a few new piece, people each year, a few people drop out for health reasons or whatever. And so it's kind of a, an evolving show, but I have some people that have been with me since day one. Who's and, been with you since day one? Uh, Delbert Beckham, uh, Cassandra Fink, uh, Terry Jones, Cynthia Daniel, me. Um, uh, just, just several of them have been quite a while, but every year I like to have two or three new artists. Chris Kimmler is a new artist this year. Uh, wonderful, a piece behind us, a wonderful piece by uh, Robert Logan, a uh, stone piece. He was new two or three years ago, and uh, we, just, we just try to get bigger and better every year. And the State Fair supports us, so we love that. Absolutely. So where is it located in the fair? We're on First Avenue. 
which is the street that runs in front of the lagoon. And as you walk from the big fountain, which I happen to call the Minnick Fountain because my husband designed that fountain back when there were museums here. <laughs> the famous here. plug. The fam <laughs> famous plug. Uh, back when there, the museums were still here, he did it to where all of the, uh, he did flags around it to tell what the museums were. So they call it something or other fountain. I call it the Minnick Fountain. That's where my piece is. It starts there and you just look left and right as you're walking down First Avenue all the way to nearly the Butterfly Garden. And uh, there's a fabulous sculpture to your left or to your right. Just open your eyes and you can't miss them. Thanks so much. Thank this you. This really is a wonderful show. It really is. It really uh, is. They are available for sale, they all are. the pieces. They are. Who do they contact if they're interested there, in a piece? There is a sign, if I can show you the sign, in right front of, oh, I'm sorry, in front of each piece that gives you all the information about it. If you'll take a snapshot, you can contact the artist. A lot of people, I have a few people that sell during the fair, but a lot of people I hear from during the year that uh, they've sold, somebody saw it at the fair, and uh, six months later, they said, we finished our backyard, we're doing this or that, and they buy it then. So it's a, wonder a wonderful little phone call for me during the year to hear from an artist, oh Lottie, I sold my piece from the fair. So absolutely, come out, look at the sculptures back and forth, take a snapshot if you're interested, and buy the sculpture. These are Texas artists, I don't let anyone in, but Texas artists. Oh, well, great. Prejudice. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. You're doing great work. Thank you. And, uh, and we'll keep it up. We'll keep it up, and we'll see you next year. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome to Mod Artist Gallery. In a recent editorial, art critic Todd Camplin from ModernDallas.net wrote, Mod Artist Gallery is another space that breaks the mold of traditional galleries. This group's space of artists has rotating shows but also acts as a place where artists in the group can take collectors and talk to people one-on-one -on -one about their work. Stop by Mod Artist Gallery at 2514 Converse in the Dallas Design District or visit us at modartistgallery.com. Modern Dallas is at the construction exhibit in the uh, Science Building at the State Fair of Texas. It's located at 3921 Martin Luther King Boulevard. It's available to see from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and goes on through October the 18th. There's a myriad of amazing sculptures. You can see a few that we've uh, featured on this week's show on Modern Dallas TV. Hunger affects and plagues virtually every city and community around the globe. And as a response to the need, in 1992, the Society of Design Administration began hosting construction competition donating millions of pounds of food to U.S. food banks. And for those in need, construction competitions are now held in over 150 cities around the world. So make sure on your wild and woolly trip down to the uh, State Fair, you peek into the Science Building and check out construction. To wrap up this week on Modern Dallas, it's another big week on the arts and the calendar. On the art scene, most of the CAD galleries have their openings on October the 17th, Saturday evening. For all those details, you can sign up to receive Modern Dallas Art News. Go to moderndallas.net and add your email address and we'll deliver you the art news this coming week. More importantly, the MAC presents their annual membership show, Weatherproof and a wrap-up party for Aurora at their new location in the Cedars. And we talked to Jordan Roth about CAD Dallas's CAD Fund, their up-and-coming event that focuses on selecting a single artist who wins a prize. Thank you, Jeff. CAD is really excited about the second annual CAD Fund, which will take place on Sunday the 18th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Um, on that night, it's really exciting. The, uh, can, the finalists will compete for a huge prize that um, is selected that night by the attendees. So you'll have maybe a hundred guests who will listen to proposals by six finalists and that night uh, their votes will enable the winner to take home a cash prize. Last year Julie Libersat from UNT brought home $5,000. The judges this year, uh, Ju uh, Justine Ludwig, Michael Mazurik, and Jed Morse have been working diligently to narrow down to these six finalists. We don't know who they are yet. You'll know on the 18th, and please join us and vote and uh, 
help one of these deserving artists take home a big, big prize. Tickets are available through the CAD website. That's caddallas.net, C-A-D, dallas.net. They're $40 a piece. Check it out and learn more about what they're doing. And on the calendar of events, we have on the 15th, the Modernist Meetup, which is at Jonathan Adler at 4525 McKinney Avenue from 6 to 8 p.m. And also on the 16th, we have Aurora, which takes Dallas and turns a night into a magnificent light extravaganza. All those details are on Modern Dallas calendar. And also coming up on the 22nd, we stop by and chat with Greg Brown at the Dallas Center for Architecture about Rocketecture, their event coming up on the 22nd. Greg, tell us a little bit about Rocketecture and when it is and what it's about. Absolutely, October the 22nd at 6.30, we will be at the Carlisle Room at Lone Star Guest Lofts. Um, it's just been renovated. It's a wonderful Art Deco building um, from the 30s. Um, and we'll be there with um, you know, cocktails and music and some fun activities and most importantly, a silent auction that has all sorts of great items, everything from resort packages to artworks, a lot by um, architects from here in town, furniture, accessories, that kind of thing. Is there a uh, cost to there uh, is, attend? There is, unfortunately. <laughs> um, $125, and those tickets you can get at DallasCFA.com, our website. Um, but it's, it's going to be a fun evening. Um, we'll have the DJ spinning tunes, and like I said, some fun cocktails. Downtown Dallas will be there uh, doing a fun Build Your City activity with us, so it should be, a, should be a great evening. Where do the proceeds go? Proceeds go to all of our educational programming, so everything from our scholarship program to our walking tours to exhibitions um, to our kids' programs. It, it really keeps us going. Fantastic. Just so you know, DCFA is the Dallas Center for Architecture, which is a part of the AIA Dallas office, so great event, great cause, and doing great things for the architectural community in uh, Dallas. Thank you very much. We'd love to see everybody there that night. So for this week, I think we've given you a lot of modern. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. Enjoy all the events, the gallery openings, and visit moderndallas.net. And if you'd like a little more modern, listen to us on The Modernist on Sundays at 2 p.m. Jeff Mitchell and myself, Jeff Levine, on KLIF 570 AM. And if you're in the market for a modern, mid-century modern, contemporary home, high-rise, or loft, we simply have the finest moderns in Dallas. And for this week, hope you enjoyed our show. It's a wrap.